So we got a D6T, which is a nice high track uh, MC Square system on it. The customer actually installed this himself. So that's awesome. Um, the only thing is, is it, it has some issues where uh, the sensor is not reading this front blade sensor, which that is interesting that it's like that. Ah, oh, they're TSI 3 sensors. Okay. So, yeah, anyways, so they're just, they're like five feet off. And it's probably just measurements and uh, something about this sensor not reading. So it's probably just a cable that went bad. So let, we'll check it out and get the system running for them. So they in this installed it themselves. That's awesome. All right, so the first thing I want to do is take a look at this sensor. And it probably should have a terminator on here. Or else, you know, it will have issues. So we'll do that. Um, just a 50 ohm terminator. That's a TSI-3. So this is a terminator. Basically tells the system, it's like a diode basically. It says don't go that way, go that way. Yeah. And without it, it could get confused. It could potentially give you that uh, that message if this is all this system needs then I'm gonna say these guys did an awesome job installing because this looks good this looks really good quick simple effective yeah nice nice well jump in and test it out okay let me just get these off here so I don't lose them Yeah, D6T. Yeah, they did a nice job. I mean, that's... Keep it simple, right? I wonder if they were watching my videos. The only thing that's kind of... They don't have a, a, a mount for this display, but other than that... Alright, so we're still getting the slope sensor not connected. GPS is not running. I saw the slope sensor flash green. Did you see that? So, nothing there. Let's go in and check the actual machine setup of this. We'll edit it. They got bulldozer, GPS antenna, middle of the blade. Okay. MCI 3, MCI 4. Yeah, because this is an MCI 4 system. It's on the main. Control output. Sensor ID is 30. I don't know. That's what I wanted to check and make sure. The sensor has serial numbers on them. All right, let's take a look here real quick. So serial number is 3739305 so 39305 so whatever's in there is not right sensor ID TSI 305, that's it right there. Should be. All right, next, we'll check these measurements after, after I get life. Bam, instant, green. That's all it was. So, I mean, they did an outstanding job. 
Yes, the machine control troubleshooter said you did an outstanding job. That's awesome. This company installed their own system on their own machine. They took all the effort and that's just and it works. The only thing they had wrong was an ID number for the sensor. And they didn't put a terminator on the sensor. That's it. That is outstanding. They even they even did their own machine file and everything. See right here, that's that's the only thing they had wrong besides having not having a terminator on their sensor. Beautiful. All right, let's just double check these measurements real quick for them, and then we'll uh, take the rover and we'll actually test it and make sure they are tied into their model. All right, let's adjust these measurements for them. So, PGS3, that's correct. That antenna is a PGS3. All right, so number one is your antenna height from bottom of blade. I got 11.57. They got 12.83.57. And let's see, number two is to the GPS pole itself, the antenna itself, how far over from the right. And I got, uh, well, I put a number on there I can't read. <laughs> Isn't that typical? <laughs> um, mm. Interesting. I think it's a six, maybe? Six point two two? I better go retake that measurement. <laughs> yep, it was a six point two two. It's just my six looks a lot like a zero, which is weird. So uh six point two two. Number three. How far inside from the cutting edge is that? And I have that right here, 0 0.25 for number three. Number four, the width of the blade. I got 12.53, they got 11.5. All right, next, next, next. Oh, go back. No reverse detection, okay. Com one port, all right. And finish. All right. So it's out of design. So let's take a look at their model real quick. So we'll just ask them if that's correct. Um, wow. And okay, let's go to surface. Make sure surface is on. Let's update the surface. And we'll go to active. And make sure that their surface is on. Alright, so even though we're out of design, we should still have GPS. Okay. Now, this has to make sense when you're out there. Right now, we're on a pretty good slope. I don't know if you can tell, but we're on a, we're on a pretty good slope here. Um, it's a positive slope so you want to make sure if we go in here and we check it's saying positive 7.2 percent which looks about correct but we need to double check that and we need to double check the main fall so I think I'm gonna move this someplace uh, flatter you see how the numbers are bouncing around like that? I'm not moving anything. They're moving too much. I can't find zero. I should not be doing that. It should be holding. All right, I found the issue for the sensor values going wonky. Um, it's actually just the setting. Label up, arrow forward. The filtering was at zero which would cause that issue right there, as you see. So filtering has to be, you know, something other than zero. Um, three filtering is good that we've noticed. Okay, I think we got it now. So if we slope the blade, it actually goes to zero the way it should. 
And if we raise the blade, we have our main fall slope of the actual blade. Well, we lost radio for a while and uh, still haven't gotten it back. I have him over there uh, restarting his base. I have a brand new antenna on this system. Just trying it out and uh, still no radio. I gotta take this box apart. Gotta take that box apart and look inside and make sure the antenna wire is connected. Oh yeah, this has been opened. Yep. <laughs> Radio antenna came off. Easy fix. Well, that was an easy fix. Um, so, when they mounted the MCR, well, MCI-4, to the interior there, they didn't use any vibrator mounts or anything, so it's taken the, the full vibration of the machine as it moves around. All right, MCI-4 is back together. Let's turn it on. Get back to testing this machine. I, all, I was at that point where all I had to do was test the blade to the model and make sure uh, just adjust where we need to adjust. Um, and the radio went out. Yeah, I've been working on this radio issue for about two hours now. <laughs> <laughs> you, you see, the main the main issue was done in less than an hour, and then this secondary issue that popped up, this no radio. Um, I found the MCR MCI4 radio antenna disconnected inside, but uh, it apparently locked up the radio board. So now I have to go in and upgrade all the firmware on everything just went green oh my goodness two hours of trying to unlock that radio oh we're back to where we were everything's fixed i just gotta check it with the rover <laughs> and we had that radio issue go bad because it's it's mounted on this deck right here and it doesn't have any vibration um little vibration uh, adapters for it and it takes the full brunt of the machine and you see I only moved that right there and it, it knocked that cable off inside which froze up the 915 radio board which caused a two and a half hour delay yeah Whew, good grief finally got it though alright okay so I got the measurements if I can find them so that's All right, so that's right, and I'm on right, remeasure. All right, so both sides are equally out. Um, the left side is just a difference of two hundredths, which I don't worry about that much because I, I can make that up in between. So a foot is how much it's off. So we'll, we can adjust that real simple. All right. Uh, D6T Caterpillar. I say they did a good job. Uh, just a couple things. Uh, I just have to put that cover back on. So it just needed a terminator. It needed the orientation and it needed the blade uh, basically calibration and it needed the, the roll calibration. And then after we did that, everything was fixed and good to go. But then uh, we moved the machine to check the main fall and the radio went out. So I had to open up the MCI-4, fix the radio, but the, the 915 board got locked up, so I had to load a bunch of firmware into the system to unlock it, which took a couple hours and got it working. Uh, took a two minute check, each blade adjusted. It was off about a foot. Uh, All right, he's gonna go give it a test for me, make sure uh, he's happy and uh, make sure everything's working to his satisfactory before I roll out of here, so.
So this dozer, this is just indicate only. It doesn't cut automatically. He has to manage uh, his cutting blade, but he can watch the numbers and kind of stay close to grade while he's watching the numbers. I just grabbed the rover so we can double check it real quick. Just make sure we're close. Okay, that one can go back to work. Yeah. See ya.